Hi everyone, welcome back to This Is The Police. Here we are, day 29. The Freeburg Tribune, accident at the reservoir. Water runs out in two days. <laughs> oh dear. Drunk student falls from the fifth floor window, injured. She may she's still alive. Well, I, I, why did I say she? It doesn't say at all that there's a... I'm glad they are still alive. And the fact, the, this fall, record rainfall in Freeburg. Which is just as well. Because we don't... We've only got two days of drinking water left. See, it all works itself out in the end. Don't panic. Take it nice and calm. Right, I drank too much and I don't think I can hold it together. No, you're coming in. You drink every time. We got some stripes. Who deserves some stripes? Um, Grant, you probably deserve some... Wait, hang on. Weaver, you definitely deserve some stripes. You definitely deserve some stripes. You've been awesome. Let's start the day. You know when a police chief really feels his power? When he hires and fires people? When he throws folks in jail? When he's bossing everyone around all morning? No, there's no power there. Just bureaucratic red tape. Like directing traffic. Not that it's all bad. No, I feel it the most when people come to me with accusations. Accusations happen outside the law. They don't need to be rational or supported by evidence. They don't petition justice in the careful words of legal formality. No, an accusation is a personal cry, full of resentment or envy, a defeated moan or an angry howl. The accuser rarely imagines you'll share their resentment, their envy, their hatred. No, but they do imagine that your love of power is so strong that you'll leap to decide the fates of others, happy just to take someone's word for the facts. Businessmen accuse the gangsters, the gangsters blame our public figures, public figures denounce politicians, the politicians point to the businessmen. When it comes to accusation, there's only one rule. Don't aim too high. If you overestimate your own importance, then complaining can cost you your life. So choose the easier path, exaggerate as far as you can, and try to make your plea sound as sad and pathetic as possible. There we go, some life tips for everyone there. The accusation I received today sure didn't fit the normal mold. After killing Vickis Varga and routing his supporters, Sand further strengthened his already powerful authority. Even a month ago, anyone coming out against Sand would sound like a lunatic with a death wish. Today, it's the same thing as suicide. But the letter I'm holding in my hands directly connects Henry Sand, lieutenant of the Sand Mafia family, to the reported death of successful banker John Pazzi. Henry has a daughter, Marianne, a dancer, and apparently it all started with her. One day, Marianne danced in the title role of a production of Giselle, and Henry, proud father that he is, brought the whole family to the premiere along with some of the family's business partners. Among their guests was the young banker John Pozzi. He couldn't keep his eyes off Marianne, but she ended up brushing him off. In response, Pozzi ambushed her one night after rehearsal, pulled her into his limousine and had his way with the poor girl. After that, gentleman that he was, he drove the girl home and threatened that if she told anyone what happened, her mother would get the same treatment. But her father still managed to shake the truth out of Marianne, and he decided to take his revenge. Of course, Henry uh, knew he couldn't just go with his instincts and put a I'm on the father's side here, I must admit. The rich bastard was too important for business, and Henry is neck deep in the family business, overseeing transportations for the San Mafia. He knew about every delivery delay, every car, and every shop. It was mostly thanks to Henry that the whole sand operation rolls so smoothly. Henry has free access to all their off-book cars and a tar black motive. Yeah, he could easily arrange the death of John Pozzi as a drunken, late-night hit-and-run. But Henry Sand is smarter than that. If this oh. story about Pozzi is true, he'd more likely go to the boss and ask permission. Well, you know, I'm I on his side. This letter, the ramblings of As a I retired said. gangster looking to spice up his life with little excitement. The way the letter started, my dear little old cop cake, 
I had every mind to toss it in the trash. But something else got my attention. They're rarely ever signed. But this one ended Ooh, Robespierre, Robespierre. And I doubt it's an imposter. No one would go against the most powerful group in the city, hoping to hide behind the name of some prankster clown. Ooh, like everyone else, I had obviously no the idea next who story Robespierre line, Robespierre. was or what he wanted. But there was no doubt that this guy was more than a little crazy. An arrogant psychopath could be dangerous. Definitely worth looking into. Indeedy. Okay. They are good, but they do go on a bit. Right, let's get this day started a proper. We've already got the hit and run. Okay, oh, this is the case, right. We've got no... Did Honestly, who do we got in today? Who who do we have in? Is any, uh, Weaver, are you, you're in today, aren't you? Uh, detectives, let's pull Weaver off the case. Let's pull Johnson off the case as well. Uh, hit and run, let's put Weaver, you're in charge. Take Johnson with you, go. Uh, the snitch. Uh, you've paid your snitch a weekly fee of 500. Oh, okay. We might have to bunker off. I didn't realize it was 500 every week. Um, robbery. Three armed robbers wearing masks entered the bank and demanded the manager open the safe. Pong. Take Beard. Take Smith. Uh, take the SWAT team, actually. If it's armed robbers, then we don't want to be messing around. Just take the SWAT. We can use them twice a day, so that's fine. Ooh, so tempting. Ah, here we go. So, this is the hit and run. This is the uh, the banker. It's a white limo. Squished man. Okay. Uh, Ross Murphy, victim's limo driver. Mr. Pats Patsy. Pazzy. Sometimes I like to walk the city at night. He had just taken him out for a long business dinner. We pulled up to the park in the monument and I didn't notice anything suspicious, although there was a grey truck that didn't have any license plates. I followed us into the park from the restaurant, then turned off somewhere. Ooh, medical examiner. Died immediately on impact. A heavy metal sorry, a heavy vehicle struck him at high speed. The bruises on his body show traces of a grill, so you might like to look for a jeep or a truck. Soft tissue contained fragments of a windshield, so it appears that the, the blow was strong enough to throw his body into the air and through the windshield. The victim's clothes show traces of grey paint. Okay, so it is that unmarked grey truck, more than likely. Ivan Belaskovsky, passerby. I ran in the park at night. Tonight I heard the roar of a motorcycle, so I went to check it out. I figured it was a, the bikers who liked to race around the empty roads. But when I closed I saw it, the road was empty. When I saw the body, I called the police. That's a, that's a red herring. Motorcycle tyre tracks and shattered glass were found at the crime scene. Oh. What did he say? Um, a heavy metal... Uh, where, where did I get heavy metal from? Heavy vehicle struck him at high speed. Bruise on his body showed traces of a grill. So it might be looking for a jeep or a truck. Windshield. Uh, okay. Surveillance camera. At nearby intersection, a surveillance camera recorded a group of bikers. And behind them, you can make out a grey jeep with a cracked windshield. Okay, so it's that. It's that. Okay, fine. The motorbikes were just a, uh, a coincidence. Trade Unions Building. A young woman, frightened to death, just called from the trade union. A drunken factory worker broke into the building. The same man who yesterday visited the union, demanding a return of the money that was with withheld from his salary over the past six years. The man is shouting and threatening to break through the service window. Vandal, take Grant. Ah, here we go. The bank robbery. The bank is located in the city center where there's lots of traffic and civilians. Block the exit to the bank with the police cruiser. Uh, sneak up the front window and peek inside. Take up a comfortable pos firing position at the main exit. Let's um, block the exit with the... Yeah, block the exit. Okay, the woman's shouts can be heard from inside the bank. Get on the bullhorn. Attention, you are surrounded. Wait until the robbers exit. Storm the building. Let's wait until... Let's call them out. Offenders caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good job, everyone. 
Good job. A new Pong in charge with Beard. Never going to be a failure, was it? Never going to be a failure. Okay. Here we go. Armed robbery. Oh, trade union building's just kicked off. The situation is more serious than we thought. Okay, you can have Kojak, and that's all I've got. I'm going to have to wait for the guys to come back now. How long? We've got another day before we can make a request. Boom, there we are, the back. Armed robbery. We've just received an alert from the jewellery store. Six armed men wearing masks entered the premises, demanding all the cash jewellery placed into the garbage bags. What SWAT, you're coming out again? And we'll send out the dream team once more. Oh, great. Okay, these guys might be back in... They will be back in time. Trade union building. Offender court. Officers unharmed. Everything else is groovy. Fantastic. Right, guys, get back. We've got another job for you. Assault at the theatre of drama. During the production of My Sweet Juliet, the zombie, <laughs> actors in the performance were um, buffeted by flying eggs thrown by someone in the audience. The assault was accompanied by shouts, Shame! Necrophilia! Shame! Ding! Shame! Ding! It's all Game of Thrones all over again. How dare you mock such a classic? According to the elderly theatre guard, the eggs were thrown by ten, ten young girls, all dressed in white. Okay, we'll send the paddy wagon then. Grant, take Vandal. Goodness me. The situation is more serious than we thought. The armed robbery. Okay, Kojak, you go and join them. That's all we got, guys. That is the lot. We've got a very small shift. Six officers on shift. Sawmill neighbourhood. Um, I think we're going to have to miss this. Uh, just called coming from a girl who went to her friends to have a barbecue out of the sawmill. Out by the sawmill. When the food was almost ready, a group of drunk students suddenly appeared, claiming it was their spot. A massive fight broke out. Okay. Um, okay, the officers are on the way back. The assault. Offenders caught. Officers unharmed. Good job, guys. They've captured all those ten young girls dressed in white. City Hall. Reception. The reception at City Hall doesn't have enough protection. The mayor urgently requests you to send some more officers. Well, I don't have anyone. Oh, God. This is going to end this pretty quick. City Hall hate us. Right, arm robbery. Pong, Beard, Smith, Kojak, Swat. Good job all round, guys. Fantastic. Oh, Vandal and Gran might be back. They will be back in time. Come on, guys. Yes. Okay, so this is the massive fight. So we'll send the paddy wagon again. Vandal and Gran, you get out there. Uh, we've got the rest of the guys coming back should you need reinforcements. Goodness me, we are struggling with this tight shift. Nine oh, this is the theatre of drama. Three arm... Um, hang on. This is just where they were doing the My Juliet Zombie with the girls. Three armed um, thugs managed to rob the audience of the playhouse. Before the ci civilians realised what's happening, the criminals had already fled the scene. Until the last minute, everyone thought it was just all part of the show. The cloakroom attendant says the robbers left in a yellow school bus. What is going on? Pong, take beard. Um, yeah. Something really weird is going on. Is this all Robespierre's work, maybe? He's a jokester, isn't he? The fight. Vandal, Grant, Paddy Wagon. Good job, good job. Cracking job. Well done. Okay, we got the gas station homicide. An eyewitness reported that a man drove up to the gas station, got out, and shot the guy behind the counter with an automatic rifle. And now he's just standing there quietly, filling up, filling up his gas tank. The dude is crazy. Right, Kojak, take Smith. Uh, hang on a minute. We'll wait till the other guys are coming back. You may need a little bit of backup. Looks like we have a situation here. Uh... Even late at night, finding the right bus wasn't too difficult. The criminals abandoned it less than a mile from the sub... Okay, let's search the bus. The motel, the motel manager reports three men threatened me with a gun and said we had no more rooms. I put them in the room we already rented, but they won't be happy when the guests return. Try to trick the gunman. Who's in there? You're in our room. Knock on the door. Open up police. Order the civilians to return to their rooms and lock the doors and begin the assault. 
Um. Let's go in with it as the police. Pong, beard, offender court, officers unharmed. Ah, oh, civilians unharmed. Those guys are just the best, aren't they? These two, this is dream team, Pong and Beard. Pong Beard, the spectacles. The spectacle to the bispecular. So I'm trying to think of something. Can't think of a team name. It doesn't work, does it? Okay, hang on. Vandal and Grant and Paddy Wagon are back. Right. Kojak, Vandal, Grant. Take Smith. Paddy Wagon's holding the fort until Beard and Pong get back. Here we go. The theft. No. F Robbery. Oh, f Okay, we got some frames here. Okay, so we got him walking by a white truck. We got him lounging on the grey jeep with no license plate and the cracked windscreen. So that we know that's about right. And we got him walking across the road, so yeah, fine. It's not good. Oh, I don't know. Not much to go on, to be honest with you. Not much to go on. Okay, Beard and Pong are back. Great stuff. So it's one o'clock in the morning. Homicide report. Kojak, Vandal, Grant, Smith. Good job, guys. Oh, automatic weapons found. Uh, we'll bring those back to police station, please. Okay, that is the end of the shift. Thank goodness for that. What a day. What a tough day indeed. That has been harsh. Well, we'll leave it there, guys. Not a very productive day, but um, a tough one, especially with that shortened shift. But we do get to make a request next time to City Hall. Who will probably ignore it because we didn't send security to their desk. I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you continue to enjoy this. If you are, hit that thumbs up and share it with all your friends. And join me next time for the next exciting episode of This is the Police.